and uh, you've already done the smart thing by coming to church. Now let's open our Bible to the book of 1 Kings chapter 4. 1 Kings chapter 4. Amen. The book of 1 Kings chapter number 4 this evening. We'll look here at just a, a small portion of Scripture and then go over a whole lot more of it here in the next few minutes. 1 Kings chapter 4 tells of the life of young Solomon, the son of David, who was, up until the time of Jesus Christ, the wisest man that ever lived. 1 Kings chapter 4. And let's look at verse 32. 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 32. And he spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spake also of beasts, and of fowl, and of creeping things, and of fishes. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. The middle of verse 34 is the title of the message, The Wisdom of Solomon. The Wisdom of Solomon. We have all heard of the great wisdom of Solomon. Let's see why and why the Bible says Solomon is the wisest man that ever lived. Now, you young people here, listen to that. You want wisdom. That's what you want. Yeah. Proverbs 4 and verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Uh, let's first of all think about tonight, what is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? We're living in a world that puts all the emphasis on knowledge and education. So, certainly nothing wrong with the right kind of knowledge and education, but there's a difference between wisdom and knowledge. Right. Knowledge can be memorized. Wisdom must think things through. Wisdom is something that enables us to use knowledge. You listen? Wisdom is what enables us to use knowledge. That means you can, you can know a lot of stuff and not have any wisdom. And there's a lot of people like that. They know a lot, but have no wisdom whatsoever. Now, I'll show you what that means. Our preacher, my pastor used to tell us, he said, wisdom is the right use of knowledge. Wis uh, uh, knowledge is a chainsaw. And they can start it, and that thing's powerful, and it's strong. Wisdom is knowing how to take it and cut a tree down with it. That's the difference between wisdom and knowledge. A man with a chainsaw that don't know how to use it can do a lot of damage. He can hurt somebody. He can tear stuff up. And knowledge without wisdom can be a very dangerous thing. And wis that's why they call wisdom teeth. People say, well, he ain't got his wisdom. You know why they call them wisdom teeth? You get them 18, 19, 8, 17, 8, because you, you ain't got no sense till you're that, about that age. And really, it's 21 for most of you and 30 for many of you, and some still are not there. Uh, I, mean, uh, wis I mean, it takes a long time uh, to get wisdom. Wisdom is first based. Nobody gets it uh, overnight. It brings confidence, and it brings mercy. Psalm 110 and verse 10 said, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now get that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 8 and verse 13 said, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So if a man don't fear God, he's not even the first base when it comes to wisdom. There's what we call in the Bible the wisdom of this world. That's a different kind of wisdom. That doesn't mean anything. That don't get you nowhere. It's like, uh, like Einstein. Einstein was a smart man, but nothing Einstein ever gave this world really helps you through raising your kids or how to go through a divorce or how to fight through cancer or losing a loved one. 
I mean, you give us the atom bomb and how to figure out fractions and stuff, but that's, that's not wisdom. That's, that's a bunch of knowledge. Wisdom, knowledge is the fear of the Lord. So it doesn't matter how educated a man is. It doesn't matter how high his IQ is. If that man don't fear God, he's not even first base when it comes to wisdom. Now, the Bible said the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Now you say, preacher, what is the fear of the Lord? Proverbs 8.13 said, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That means most people in the world have no idea in this world what the fear of the Lord is. That means you're not really real smart till you start hating evil. Amen? Uh, because you just ain't got it figured out right until you start hating evil. Uh, you know, uh, the Bible said Solomon wrote Proverbs. Now, Proverbs is a wise old saying. And I hope, I hope after I'm gone, if I ever go, I hope that y'all remember me for something that I said. I mean, I hope people say, Brother Danny always said, Brother Danny always said. That's a proverb, a proverb that, that sticks, and it's wisdom. Uh, the Bible talks about Solomon. We've all heard of Proverbs. An old Jewish proverb is, A wise man lowers a ladder before he jumps into a pit. That's a wise saying. In other words, you don't jump down the pit if you ain't got no way back out. A wise man lowers a ladder. That's true in matters of business. That means make sure you can pay your payments before you go buy a car. A lot of people ain't got that kind of wisdom. Amen. Uh, uh, yeah, they sign the dotted line and they have no idea in the world. That's not a wise man. An old Dutch proverb. The wicked shun the light as the devil shuns the cross. That's true. Uh, a wise man cares not for what he cannot have. Amen? Uh, Smith and Wesson beats four aces, stuff like that. Uh, uh, never play leapfrog with a unicorn. You know, old saying of the wise uh, people like that right there. Uh, just wise old saying like that. Amen? Well, uh, there's some good ones. Solomon wrote 3,000 proverbs. 3,000. How would you like to be remembered 3,000 things that you said. Now, the truth is, most people live and die, and nobody ever remembers one thing they say. Ain't that right? I'd hate to live in this world and die. And everybody said, you remember old Danny Castle? Yeah. Did he ever say, no, I never did hear him say nothing worth remembering. That'd be awful, wouldn't it? Uh, Solomon had 3,000 proverbs. How about this? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Pretty wise, huh? Don't you think that's pretty good? What about, what about this saying right here? Uh, uh, what about fools make a mock at sin? Pretty good, huh? Uh, what about talking about that old whorish woman, and he said her house is the way to hell. Amen? That's, uh, that's the old... Them old Atlanta whore wives that come on on it said it said her house is the way to hell. I mean that drug dealer's house is the way to hell. Uh, that liquor store is the way to hell. Solomon made those great sayings like that. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from. That's pretty good, ain't it? Fain foolishness bound in the heart of every child. Those are all proverbs that King Solomon made. Uh, that's right. And then he wrote a thousand and five songs. Get out of here, Paul McCartney. John, get out, you amateurs. I, I mean, like that. One thousand and five songs, including the most famous song ever, the Song of Solomon, that made it into the Holy Scripture of the Word of God. That's what kind of wisdom Solomon had. He spake of trees. He spake of beasts. He spake of fowls and fishes and trees and spiders and ants and rabbits and all kinds of things and creeping things, horses and fish of the sea. That's what Solomon did. It was wisdom. So wisdom is the right use of knowledge. You know them old time preachers? Uh, a lot of time people make fun of them because maybe they didn't have a lot of education. But I'm going to tell you something, brother. Some of them old time preachers up in them mountains have got more wisdom in their little finger than some of this modern day crowd uh, comes out of a seminary or a cemetery has got in their brains. You know that? 
I've heard some of them old preachers get up that couldn't even pronounce all the words in the Bible. And they could bring stuff out of that Bible you know, that would amaze you. That, I mean, you just sit there and, and God give it to them. God gives wisdom. I, I'll never forget those stories. I said that old, my old preacher used to go and uh, some of them old preachers had wisdom. Old Bob Jones Sr. and some of them old men uh, when they was young, uh, they, he had wisdom. They said one day, there's a... Uh, 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 chicken thief in the community. And this chicken thief, somebody been stealing chickens, and they all met on Saturday night. Everybody met under a big old tabernacle and they was going to have church. Everybody in the whole community got that. And the preacher got up, and he got up, and he said, Now, ladies and gentlemen, he said, There's a chicken thief in here tonight. And he said, You're hiding. But he said, uh, Tonight, God's going to show us who you are. He took a big old rock, about that big, and laid it on the pulpit. He said, in just a minute, God, the Holy Ghost, is going to show us who the chicken thief is. He laid that rock down. He got to preaching. He got in a big way, about 10 or 15 minutes, and the Bible says, ha, and the Bible says, ha. I mean, he got in about third gear, and boy, he got into it, and the Holy Ghost came, and he got to preaching, and he said, and now, God, We'll show us the chicken thief. And he grabbed that rock and reared back and one fellow back there ducked like that right there. Uh, you know where you get that? You don't get that out of a book in a seminary. Uh, you know, that stuff like that comes from God. And some of them old preachers like that, they had wisdom. Amen? Uh, years ago, this old uh, women, uh, remember when them women years ago used to wear them big old hats? Well, them great big old hats, church. Lord, they, I mean, the whole family would walk under them things when it rained, like, like an umbrella. And they'd all come in there, and they'd cover up two or three aisles like that, and you couldn't see the platform was real far, low, low like this. And he got up one night, and he said, uh, Ladies, if you don't mind while I preach, if it's all right, would you please remove your hats so everybody could see? And all the women in the church took their hat off and put it down self one. And she sat there and looked at him like, I ain't taking my hat off of you. I, I went, he said, ladies, please, make sure everybody around you can see, please remove your hat. And she just sat there and looked at him like, I ain't putting this off of you. And he said, uh, thank you very much, ladies. I appreciate that. I was preaching somewhere the other day, and uh, I asked all the ladies to move their hats, and they all did except one. And come to find out, she was bald-headed. And uh, that woman went, oh. Put the hat down like that. <laughs> I'm telling you, brother, that's smooth, buddy. That's smooth. That ain't knowledge. That's wisdom. Amen. That's wisdom. That's right. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that's wisdom. That ain't knowledge. You don't get that in the schoolroom. You get that from God. You know where you get knowledge, preachers? You get knowledge by taking your Bible and going up in the woods and getting down like this and say, God, I'm an ignorant child. Show me something. Give me something. And wisdom comes from God. Wisdom comes from God. Listen, I've seen 10, 11-year-old kids got more wisdom than a doctor on the radio that don't even know the right Bible to preach out of. Amen. Say amen right there. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's what wisdom is. Secondly tonight, I want to say this. When should you get wisdom? Obviously, the younger the better. In 1 Kings chapter 3, uh, that's why some kids have wisdom. That's when Solomon got it. He behaved right. He behaved right. You know what God said in 1 Kings chapter 3? The Lord come to Solomon one night, and he said, Solomon, ask whatever you want me to do for you. I'll do it to a young man. Now, you know what? If God asks most people that, what if God come down tonight and ask most people in North Carolina, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Oh, you know what? Oh, I want a new house. I want a new car. I want a million dollars. You know what Solomon said? You know what Solomon said? He said, Lord, I'm not asking for riches. He said, Lord, I'm not asking for uh, uh, material things. I'm not even asking for a long life. I'm not asking for help. Just give me enough sense to do what I need to do to help these people. And the Lord said, you got it, buddy. I'm putting wisdom in you. And just because you didn't ask for that other stuff, I'm going to go ahead and throw that in too. You're going to get rich. You're going to live a long life. And I'm going to tell you, I learned something from that right there. You don't, you don't ask God for long life and riches. You ask God for wisdom to live right and serve Him and do His will. Seek first the kingdom of God then all these other things shall be added unto you. 
Amen. He prayed right. He didn't pray, Lord, let me win the lottery. Fellow come up here on Sunday morning, not long ago. He came up and he said, Preacher, you pray for me that I win that lottery or something like that. And he said, I'm going to give the money, half of it to the church. I've heard so many people put make that I get sick of hearing it. Amen. Uh, I said, the Lord ain't going to let you win it. You know what the Lord thinks about stuff like that? I heard about this man praying, and he got down, and he said, Lord, please, let me win that lottery. Let me win. The, Lord, show me the winning number, please. And God said, one, three, five, eight, seven, two. He went, whoo, really, Lord, really? Say it again, one. The Lord said, one, three, five, eight, seven, two. He said, glory to God, whoo. He went and told all his friends, the Lord showed. He said, I'm winning the lottery. The Lord told me the answer. He put it down. He put it down. He put in his number. He jumped it in. I put it in, but it was a dud. Didn't win nothing. He went back and he said, Lord, I thought you said one, three, seven, five, eight, two, or whatever I said a minute ago. You try it sometime. And I thought you said that. And the Lord said, I did. That's a good lesson for you. Amen. Some of you blondes ain't got that yet, but it might kick in here in a few minutes. I ain't got time to wait on you. That means God don't, you know what God wants you to do? Get out and get you a job and make an honest living and earn what you get. Amen. He don't want you gambling, trying you crook, trying to get something for nothing. Amen right there. Don't go in there and say, Lord, let me win. Lord, let me win. How about getting down and saying, Lord, let me win a soul. Lord, let me win somebody to Jesus. He, he might give you $100 once in a while if you get your priorities right and get it straight. Old Solomon said, Lord, I ain't asking for money. Turned out to be the richest man in the whole world. Amen. Amen. You say, okay, so if I ask to be a soul winner, God will make me rich? No. Don't work like that. You're trying to trick him, and you can't trick God. Amen. The only way to get what that stuff is really not wanted. Then you don't care if you get it or not. Uh, when should you get wisdom? While you're young. Amen. He behaved right. He judged right. Listen, that old boy had wisdom. He was just a young man. And the Bible said they come from everywhere to hear the wisdom of Solomon. You know, one of the things that amazes me is a young man, especially when I see a young preacher uh, come up and God puts wisdom in his heart above. One of the things that used to amaze me, we used to let these boys preach. I mean, eight, nine, ten years old. And there's always somebody back there saying, them little old boys don't know what they're doing. They ain't no right, they have no right letting a little kid up there. That's a man's job. You know what I've heard? I've heard them kids get up 10, 11, 12, 13 and bring stuff out of the Scripture that would blow your mind. Unbelievable. And I'm sitting there and something's saying, the Lord give him that. The Lord, you get with God, age ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm telling you, education don't have nothing to do with it. We're all on level ground. Even your IQ don't have nothing to do with it. You know old Howard, old Howard, Brother Howard comes down here from Tennessee. We all know Brother Howard's not an educated man as far as the world goes. I mean, he's as hillbilly and country as cornbread. But I'm telling you, you better not underestimate that old fellow. I've heard him get up and bring stuff out of the Scriptures and tie verses in, tie verses there. That, that, that would just amaze you. Just, just blow your mind and bring something out of that Scripture that you just wouldn't believe. It comes from the Lord. So they come to Solomon one time, and here was Solomon, young man, king over the whole shebang, over Israel. And he's up there king like this, and one day, here they come. King Solomon, we have a situation for you to judge. And this woman come in like that, and they was dragging her in, and she was pushing and trying to get this other woman's throat, and she was pushing her back, said, Leave me alone! I hate you! Quit it! Like that. And Solomon says, All right, what's going on here? Everybody, order in the court. Speak your peace, ma'am. And it was two harlots, two prostitutes. And one of them stood up and said, Sir, she said, uh, I had a baby. And me and this woman was both sharing an apartment because we couldn't afford to live by ourselves. We're wicked old hoes. And, and, our, and me and her both had a baby. And I had a baby and she had a baby. And, and uh, one other night she rolled over on her baby and killed it. 
and she snuck it over in the bed and got my baby and put it in the bed with her. And now she's trying to say that a live baby's hers and the dead baby's mine. Make her give it back to me. And Solomon said, Yes, ma'am. Would you like to state your case? She said, Sir, that woman's a liar. The live baby's mine. The dead baby's hers. The live baby's mine. The dead baby's hers. You get a lot from that scripture out there. One thing you get is prostitutes back in the Old Testament had more love for their offspring than a lot of so-called Christian people do now. Amen. Amen. They didn't have an abortion. They didn't give them on somebody else to raise. They didn't put them off in an adoption agency. Rather, they, they was fighting over a live baby. Well, anyway, King Solomon said, if it had been nowadays, he would have said, well, we're going to have you joint custody and uh, uh, you're going to have this one alive because there's no way of knowing. Uh, you know what King Solomon did? He said, bring me a sword. Everybody went, what's he doing? What's he doing? He said, bring that live baby and put it down there. And they put that little baby, laid it down right there. And they go, yeah, yeah, a little bitty one, like days old because they couldn't tell them apart. And it was going like that right there. And he said, bring that thing over here. Take that sword and cut it in half and give her half and her half. That make you all happy? courtroom, oh my gosh, is he really going to do that? Is he really going to do that? And the big guy comes over here with a sword like that and getting ready to take that baby's life and he goes like that and he goes like that and this woman says, no! Stop! No, don't kill it! Let her have it! Let her have it! Let her have it! And he said, take that baby and give it to her. She's the real mother. And she grabbed that baby and went out hugging it like that and the other one out and the Bible said that all, it went all over the country, the wisdom of Solomon. You know the only place you get stuff like that? You get that from God. The Lord gives wisdom. Every man in here tonight needs to ask God to give you wisdom to be a good husband and raise your family right. There's decisions that they don't make books that answers all the questions you run into. Nobody writes a book that has all the answers. You run into situations, well, who wrote a book about this? Nobody. You've got to, listen, every person's got to make choices and decisions. There ain't no book that tells you what to do. Listen, I've been in times in my life when I absolutely did not know which way to go. I had people saying do this. I had people saying don't do this. I had people saying go here. I had people saying don't go. But I was getting pulled around like a, I was in a cartoon. But I'm telling you what, I got down on my face and I begged God for wisdom and I begged Him to help me. And I'm telling you something, brother. I, I used what I had and God will give you the wisdom to do what you ought to do. I'll never forget. I told about that the other night. The reason I thought about this, I told about that youth rally the other night. When I first started preaching, I started preaching when I was 19. And I mean, I was preaching revival meetings when I was 19 years old, just like I do now. I, not, not as far off and as many, but I was 19, 20, 21, 22, preaching revival, preaching all over the country. And I was preaching all over the county, Marion, down in here, Morgan, and stuff like that. And this guy called me. And he was doing the juvenile center work over in Swannanoa. Anybody ever been over there to Swannanoa to the juvenile center? They, they have a, a, a large juvenile ministry over there between Black Mountain and Asheville. And there's a big old place over there. And this guy called me. He said, Danny, he said, I want you to come and preach. I believe it was on a Thursday night. And I said, sure. Man, I, I, my heart jumped up and down. Every time I got a chance to preach, it just tickled me. I'm telling you. But I was scared, and I was sick, and I couldn't eat. I, I was worried. And I got down, and I prayed, and I'd pray. And I'd say, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. Well, I went over there that night. I never preached anything like that. I'd preached in churches just for about uh, maybe a year. I was about 20, I believe, maybe 21. When it's half, 21 years old, I'll say. And uh, I went over there that night, and it was a big old place. Uh, it was probably about two, maybe three-fourths as big as this auditorium. And here they come. And they opened that back door, buddy. And as teenagers come in there, they was from 12 to 17. They was in there for larceny. They was in there for burglary. They had tried to kill their parents. They had run off, got in trouble, attempted murder, everything. The worst of the worst juveniles. 
I'm telling you, brother, they come in there like a while. It wasn't like... See, I've been used to preaching up Spruce Pine and up Maverick County and stuff. Them good little churches there where all the folks sat there nice and smiled at me and shook my hand. Well, they come in like a mob. And they come in there that night pushing and hollering, and they sit like this. They sit up here, where, up here like this. Put your feet down in where you're supposed to sit. Don't y'all do this. It's bad manners. And, uh, and I, I, I sit like that, and they was all pushing each other, and the girls on one side, and the boys on the other, and a guard over here, and a guard over there, and a guard over there, and a guard over there, and it was like, well, it was a mob. And I thought, oh, 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 oh boy. And I mean, I, they, most of them look older than I did. I mean, when I was 20, I looked like I was about 11. And, uh, and I, I, I was sitting there like that, scared to death, had my Bible. I said, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. And they was pushing and screaming and everything. Finally, they said, now we have this young man from down in Marion who's come to preach for us. Reverend Danny Castle, come on. I got up there that night. I opened my Bible. I read. I was scared to death. I started preaching. And the more I started preaching, the braver and bolder I got. I mean, you know how it is. You know, you're, I mean, once you get to preaching, boy, I mean, you feel 10 foot tall and bulletproof. I, 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 I played ball with a guy over there the other day, and he said, you look like you're a big man on that sign. <laughs> I said, I ain't as big as I am on that sign. They do that to scare people off. I, I put that on there. But I, 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 I was on there, and I stood there, and all them, that mob of young people in there, and boy, I got to preaching. And the first thing I know, I, it's, I start, I cut loose. And I start preaching just like I am here tonight. I said, the Bible says it. The Bible said that. The Bible said that. The Bible said that. About that time, I started kicking their gods. You know, you get, in, you get in trouble when you start kicking somebody's God. And boy, I said, I said, it's like smoking pot. You're not supposed to smoke pot. I said, it's wicked. It's wrong. And boy, they start going, no, boo, no. I said, oh boy, I've done it now. I said, it's wrong. You ain't supposed to smoke marijuana. And there was a boy on this side over here about halfway back, about right there where Jason's sitting right there. And buddy, he raised his hand like this. And he says, I want to ask a question. I said, uh-oh. That had never, I never had seen that. I thought, now what am I going to do? They didn't do that in Spruce Pine at them little nice churches. It was always, sweet young man, we're going to give you a dollar. Don't ever quit. Shake your hand. And that's what it was. Man, that guy said, I want to ask a question. I said, uh-oh. And I looked over this way and preached for a few minutes and acted like I didn't see him. But I could see him out of the corner of my eye. He was over there raising his hand. And I thought, well, surely that nut will shut up. I just kept on preaching. He didn't hush. He said, I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question. I, I thought, I didn't know what else to do. Finally, I stopped and said, all right, what do you want? And he said, if God didn't want us to smoke pot, why did he let it grow? Uh. And all them kids looked at me and went, yeah. And I went, uh-oh. I'm telling you, I shot up a prayer with the speed of light, brother. God, it boom, just like it right there. And for I knew it, before I knew it, I looked back at him and I said, well, God made poison ate too, dummy, but that don't mean you're supposed to go out and water around in it. And they were, and I said, God made rattlesnake. That don't mean you're supposed to kiss him in the mouth. And all them kids looked at that guy and said, yeah. <laughs> I said, amen. And the Lord come, and God moved out in that place, and I gave the invitation, and about two-thirds of that crowd come down there and got saved and got right that night. You know where that come from? I didn't learn that in no book. That come from me getting down in the woods up there a few days before that, saying, God, help me and give me some sense. You know where wisdom comes from? Come from God. We was up there fussing and marrying years ago about when we built that church up there, and we was, we was fussing about the seat. And I had to go to like a city council meeting or some big meeting with a mayor and the zoning board and a planning board. And they, was, they didn't like it. They didn't want the church that big in the middle of town. And they, you know, everybody said, Danny, why don't you just take go out in the country somewhere <laughs> and build you? That's what they're always saying. I said, I bet you'd love that, wouldn't you? Because we just had a big fight over liquor and uh, beer being sold. And... Uh, I said, nope, going to build it right there. That's our property, and that's where the Lord wants it, and that's where we're going to put it. And uh, we got this thing of seating. And they said, you don't have enough, enough parking places 
for the seats that you're going to have in this building. I said, hmm. And you know, they sit, they have one of them big long tables about along here, that flag over there, and they all sit around it, and I was sitting there. 31, maybe, 32, maybe, years old. I was sitting there, all these old gentlemen, elders of the city sitting around, and uh, they said, Reverend, you don't have, you don't have enough uh, parking places. I said, well, can't we squeeze in some more parking places? How wide does a parking place got to be? They said, well, it's got to be nine feet, you know, that people be hitting each other. And I, and I thought, and I thought, and they said, I'm sorry, you can't put that many seats in there. And they said, uh, the pew company, they said, your designer, the people that design, your architect, has so many pews and so many seats. And all of a sudden, I said, uh, well, you know, uh, there's a seat, and there's a seat, and there's a seat. How do you figure how many people sit on one of them things? And pew companies, when they design chairs, seats like that, they design them as 18 inches per person. That's what they call a seat. You buy pews from any pew company, any church, and they, like if they say your church seat's uh, 500, that means 18 inches, 18 inches, 18 inches, 18 inches, and every, one person in every 18 inches put 500 in there. And, and I got there and I said, uh, I said, you know, guys, uh, honest to goodness, I think they just say that to sell pews. And they all looked at me and I said, uh, I said, look at me, little as I am. I'm sitting here and I take up 24 inches. Look at my elbows. And you know, they looked at each other and they said, you know, he may be right. And one of them went and got a ruler. <laughs> and they was measuring, yeah, and some of them fellas took up way more than 18 inches, let me tell you. 36. 72. Uh, uh, I, I mean, yeah. And, and what's the I said? I said, ain't nobody going to sit in 17, 18 inches unless it's a little bitty kid. I said, let's, let's call it 24 inches. How about that? And you know what they done? They said, you know, you got a point there, preacher. And they let us figure 24 inches a person and got by and got a permit and built that church. And they wasn't going to let it happen. Now, where'd that come from? It either come from the Lord or the castle Jew in me, one or the other. <laughs> or both. But I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, tonight God gives us wisdom. He can help you on your job. He can help you with your Sunday school class, with your bus route, with the people you work with. There has to come wisdom, divine wisdom. we got the edge on this world by the wisdom of God. The guy said one time, this guy got him a job, and this guy couldn't talk play, and I'm not making fun of nobody, really. But he couldn't talk play. Stuttered really, really bad. And I'm not, I, I do it myself sometimes. And this guy, he got a job selling Bibles. And he talked like this. I don't, Jimmy. Like that. And I'm, I'm not being ugly. I, that's just the way he talked. He, he said it really, really bad. Couldn't find out. He was the top salesman. Three months in a row. And the manager looked at him and said, I just don't see how in the world you're doing this. He said, how in the world... Are you selling? He said, I, do you mind if I go with you this week to see how you're selling so many Bibles? He said, come on. He said, and I, he went out, knocked on the first door. Lady came to the door. He said, ma'am, 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 Oh, 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 would, like, like, like for me to read it to you. <laughs> she bought it. <laughs> you know, you know where you get that? <laughs> get that from the Lord, buddy. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You know what that old boy did? He said, I'm going to take what I've got. And I'm going to give it to God. My handicap. And let God use it for His glory. Where does wisdom come from? Proverbs 2 and verse 6 says, The Lord giveth 
wisdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 says, Christ is the wisdom of God. Amen. Listen, a man who understands Jesus Christ, who he is, what he is and was and will be and plans are, is a wise man and has the proper view of life and philosophy and world events. A man who does not know Jesus Christ has no clue in the world. They think the world's getting better and we're going to bring in a great era of peace and we're all going to get rid of our differences and learn to live each other and live happily ever after. A man that don't know Jesus Christ and does not put Jesus Christ in his proper place has no clue in the world what's going on. Me and you know what it is. Man fell in the Garden of Eden. He's a fallen creature. That's why all the problems in the world. That's why cats eat rats. That's why dogs kill cats. That's why tigers uh, kill. They chase deer and animals and everything and turn them up. The curse of sin into this world. And Jesus Christ came there a long time ago and was made a curse for us. And everything's falling into place right now. He's going to come back again, take us out of this old world, set up a kingdom for a thousand years. Listen, that's the wisdom that God gives. And you can't have that without a right view of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to put him in the right place. Listen, I'm about through. If you don't understand Jesus Christ, you're like a man out here with no watch and no calendar and no map and no compass. If a man don't have a watch, he don't know what time it is. If a man don't have a calendar, he don't know what day it is. If a man don't have a map, he don't know where he's at. And if he don't have a compass, he don't even know which way is north, south, east, and west. There's a, there's a, there's a word for that. It's called loss. Most people in this world tonight have no watch, no calendar, no map, no compass, and lost. You know how to get wisdom? Young people, you want me to tell you how to get wisdom? It is not from a video game. I never have seen anybody yet got any smarter by doing this all day by looking at their, their TV. You got good exercise in your thumbs. Your thumbs will probably never have a blood clot. Or, or you'll never have a thumb attack or nothing like that. But big deal. Some of you, your thumbs are the healthiest part on you. And your digestive system. Because all you do is eat and play games. And what's really bad is 30 and 35 and 40 year old men. We go on bus route and go in there. Here's a 40 year old man. And it's pretty weather outside. His grass is that high. That's pitiful. How pitiful. Tell you what you do. You put your nose in that book right there. You get you a Bible and you stick your nose in it. Read you about, read a hundred chapters this week. Do you know you can read Proverbs in three days? I've been, I was just reading it this week. Do you know you can read Proverbs in three days? Ten, twenty, thirty, only thirty-one chapters. Ten one day, ten one day. 11 the next day. Read Proverbs. You want to be smart? Read Proverbs. I'll close with this tonight. James 1.5 said, If any of you lack wisdom, what? Let him ask of God. That giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not. Amen? Listen to this. He who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool. Shun him. He who knows not and knows that he knows not is simple. Teach him. He who knows and knows not that he knows is asleep. Wake him. He who knows and knows that he knows is a wise man. Follow him. Now, most of you missed that, so let's go slow. He who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool. That means if a person's crazy and don't even know they're crazy, you better stay away from them. If a person's dumb and don't even know they're dumb. See, if you know you're crazy, you're really not too crazy. You're smart enough to know you're crazy, you got a little sense. <laughs> right? <laughs> One person said, well, I know I'm crazy. Well, you're, you got more sense than you think you do if you know you're crazy. But a man's crazy and don't know it, that's who you better watch out for. Wow. People that are, are dumb and don't even know they're dumb. People like Bill Maher. Like Joy Behar, Whippy Goldberg, people like they have they know not and know not that they know not. Right. They know not and don't even know they don't know. 
That's a dangerous shape to be in, especially if you've got money and influence. He who knows not and knows that he knows not, simple, teach him. That's a good shape to be in. Say, I'm dumb, teach me. I've had a lot of people come to me, young preachers come to me, they just hand me the Bible and say, teach me something, Brother Danny. I'm dumb, I'm stupid. That's a good attitude to have. I come to the Lord a lot of times, and I'll get down and I say, Lord, I'm an ignorant man. I don't know nothing. I'm a little kid. Help me. That's a good shape to be in. Teach him. Teach him. He who knows and knows not that he knows is asleep. People who know and don't even know they know, they're just asleep. Slap them. Wake them up. But he that knows and knows that he knows is a wise man. Follow him. That's the wisdom of Solomon. Let's stand. Bow our heads for prayer.